Hello, and welcome to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're on lesson two now. Woot woo! So we're at the Zim site at zimjs.com, and if we scroll on down to the bottom under school, you'll see our lessons. We just did uh, lesson one on display objects, and that took us three three videos. So if you haven't seen those, certainly go on back and look at those first. So now we're moving on to, and there's also an intro video, now we're new, moving on to lesson two, configuration objects and animations. So we saw how to put things on the stage, and now we're going to see uh, how we can set these parameters, because these objects that we put on stage, like a button here, has many parameters. These are different things that we can do to the button to have the button, um, change the button, etc. And we're also going to look at animation, and animation ha also has many parameters. So we want to see how we can better deal with those parameters and practice those a little bit as well. Okay, so let's go now to, well, let's go back to the Zim site and hit code, and we're going to copy our template again. So we're going to start a new page called Lesson 02. So we copy the code here. And then we'll come on back to our lessons and paste in a 02, so lesson 02 page we have now. And if we come on up, we can change the title to lesson 02. Save that. We brought in our CreateJS and our Zim, and these are this is a library and a framework that will help us code on the canvas in JavaScript. And we've discussed the template before. Uh, we have uh, we've got a frame again, and when the frame is ready, we come on down here, and we're going to start coding right here where it says, put your code here. Put your code here, and then we've got a stage.update, and uh, let's put some code in there. So when we take a look at one of the other components, we've seen a button already, just briefly. Um, let's look at a slider. So new slider dot center. And if we wanted to make a button, it would be new button.center. If we wanted to make a dial, it would be new dial.center. And, and then we tell extra information. Sometimes there's a default slide. Well, often there's a default. Almost always there's a default. But obviously, if you're putting a new label, most likely you won't want it to say label. <laughs> You'll want it to say something else. Uh, so we would pass that information in to one of its parameters. And we try and put these parameters in order so that they're the most common or popular first, and then the least popular uh, near the end. Okay, let's see what the parameters are for a slider. So we'll pop on back to the Zim site here, and hit docs. Docs, and type in slid, or slide, or whatever, or even SL probably would do it. And this finds a slider. We'll grab these parameters right here, and those parameters, by the way, they're all described down here. And there's the min, and it tells us what the default is of zero and a max, and so forth. So we're going to put those in here. And we can't just leave them. We're just beginning to code, so you may not realize it, but you can't just leave those words there. You have to comment them out. Otherwise, JavaScript would think that you want to do something with those. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, drop them on two lines, too, so we can see a bit more of them. All right, min, max, step, the button, so we can pass in a button for the slider. Well, have we even seen the slider yet? And let's just see the slider. So we put a semicolon to end the statement there, and here we are. We're going to st um, view this in a browser. So we open in browser. We do have the open in browser plus. Now that will help us when it comes to loading local images, so it gets us by some security issues. There's a little trickier way of getting by security issues, but uh, maybe we'll just do the, the Browser Plus at that point. Uh, hey, we should probably load in an image. That's a type of asset as well. We didn't see that in the last lesson. So maybe we can scale the image with a slider. Ooh, yes, that sounds good. But for now, we'll open in Browser. And here is the default slider. Hmm, pretty minimal. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but there's all sorts of things that we can do to change this. Let's, let's try some, shall we? 
min, max, step, and button. Well, for the min and the max, we won't quite be able to tell what's going on until we get to the use ticks. If we were to use ticks, then we can kind of see what our numbers are like in a sense. But another way to do that, like any of these components, is these are interactive things. These are things that we're supposed to be allowing the user to do input, and then we need to find out what that input is. So this is interactive media. We're doing creative coding, and we often when we do creative coding, we want it's not just an animation. We want the user to be able to partake in that, and that means that there needs to be events. So uh, the button and sliders, those are those are pretty basic. I mean, they border on information type things, certainly a button, but a slider, however, can change what art looks like. And you want to let the people do that. You want to let the people make the art, not just not just you, the coder, but you want to let the people make the art with the code that you're that you're providing them. Environment. So anyway, sliders can be handy for sure. Uh, we need to get the information from that slider, and to do that, we have to apply what's called an event. We see events a bit later on. Right now, we're just getting used to how to pass in these parameters, but for us to see the effects of them, I'm going to slip in an event here, and we'll look at this later. Now, this is kind of a, a cheating Zim event called change. We'll see other ways to do events. The, mo the most common is this on right here. Remember we talked about that? On ready. And that, by the way, if you're coming from any JavaScript at all, you might recognize add event, <laughs> if you can spell it, event listener. One of the longest and ugliest, uh, it's a three word method there, and we have to use it all the time. So when we went, uh, CreateJS kind of said, well, you know what, guys, why don't we change this to the word on? <laughs> so in their library, and we've taken, we've used it in the framework, we use on instead. And that's also fairly familiar because in the old fashioned world of JavaScript, we had things like on click on, and we had these on things. We don't use them anymore uh, just because you can only apply one event to an object. Whereas if you use this listener, you can apply many different events at different times to the object and different libraries can do that. So anyway, that's a bit advanced. Don't worry about it. Hey, little, little sneak preview of maybe what's to come. So this is normally how you apply an event, but it doesn't chain. We can't do that chaining on this. Do you remember that? It's a create a JS event, and they didn't make it so that it changes. Or chains, I mean, <laughs> they definitely made it so it changes. So what we did is we threw in a little a chainable. Remember chaining from the last video, last lesson? We threw in a little changeable change. You like that? Chainable change. No wonder I'm saying change. <laughs> chain and cha change and chain. Uh, a chainable change method, and in there we can put this thing called a function. We haven't seen functions, and indeed if we use an arrow function, it looks like that, but uh, don't worry, we'll come back to that. Right now, just uh, know that when the slider is changing, we're going to be able to get a property of the slider. Uh, now normally we would collect an event object there and use the target of that, but why don't we <laughs> why don't we try and work with things that you know? Remember this? We can say const slider is equal to, and now we're assigning the slider to the variable slider. Remember that this is a small s, and that's a capital S. This is the class, and we're storing that in the uh, variable or the constant slider. That's called the identifier. All right, so now we can use that. We can say slider dot current value. Now that alone won't do anything. That does indeed get the slider's current value. But if we want to see it, for instance, in the console, or later we might want to use it to increase the scale of uh, an image. Right, I'm going to show you how to do that. But if we want to see it, for instance, we can zog that. That would be fine. Or indeed, we could put, make a label and apply a property of a label. That might not be a bad idea. Zogging it's going to show up in the console. Let's, uh, let's just do that. Okay, so let's have a look then. We save that up. We come back in here. 
Oh, desktop reveal. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, how do we do that? It's over here. <laughs> Let's put those two things next to one another. Okay. Now here we have it. Now if we if we refresh here, whoop, and run our slider, then where is it? Hmm, where do we see this? Oh, oh. F12 for your console. And there indeed are the results of doing that slider. Let's see where it starts. If I scroll on back, it's at zero. And if I scroll forward, it goes to 10. That's this number down here. So indeed, it does seem to go between zero and 10. All right, let's try applying some of these parameters to make that different. The parameters would have to go in order. Uh, we might want to, do you want to try making a vertical parameter? That's our goal, or for instance, or a, verti a vertical slider. So if we wa want a min, we could change that min to one. For the scale, uh, we don't really want to scale up to 10. That's 10 times the scale of a picture is pretty zoomed in. So let's just scale three times. Oops. And <laughs> we don't do that, obviously. We need something in between. So when we're putting in the arguments here, we put something in between, and that's a comma. We can also put a space in there. It doesn't matter either way. So now we're going to have a min and a max of 1 and 3. So we save that up. We refresh here. And there is the min of 1 and a max of 3. Now what's next? A step. Hmm. Okay, so we could put in what do we want our steps to be. We could go a, a step of 0.1. Often the slider will have a, a step of 1, but when it comes to scale between 1 and 3, that, that would be a kind of like, oh, we can scale at 1, we can scale at 2, and we can scale at 3. <laughs> it's kind of like, Arr. actually, the best thing for scale would be to just leave this as 0 so that it scales uh, not in sort of decimal, it scales fluidly or organically, or whatever, or what, what would you call that? Uh, analog. <laughs> We've got an analog scale. But if we put in point 0.1 there, you can see what happens. Well, let's put in point 0.5. Point 0.5, and we refresh here. Oh, right, we're starting at 1. So, if we scale, do you, do you think we want to scale it a bit smaller too, and maybe even scale it back to zero? Sure, why don't we start at zero then? You can see what's going on there. All right, min, max, and a step. And then we can specify what button, what bar length, et cetera. But we want to get to the vertical parameter. So we can't just say, for vertical, we want to apply a Boolean. It's like true or false. So if we, we want to say true, but we can't put it here. Do you see why? we've missed all of these things. It would think true would be applying to the button. And, and really that doesn't, uh, probably be, I don't know if it'd be fine. We're supposed to specify an actual Zim button there. So then it will take that new button that we've made and put it right on the slider instead of the default button. So we don't want to pass in true there. Instead, uh, we've got a couple choices. In Zim, we pass in null. In the outside, in new JavaScript 6, to get a default parameter to work, you're supposed to pass in undefined. Null doesn't work. Null gets treated as, and stores it as null. And we never knew it was going to do that. So for many, many years, we've been using JavaScript 5 and thinking that null was fine for a default parameter. So we're so used to that. All our examples are passing in null. And indeed, zim in behind will work with null. I don't know, I guess I should teach you undefined, but that's a bit annoying. You know why? Because it's longer. <laughs> so we're going to leave this one undefined. That's the button, is undefined. Or as mentioned in many of the Zim examples, we use null there. Do you mind? I'm just going to use null. You guys can use undefined <laughs> when you want. I can't handle it. I'd rather type in four things than eight things or whatever undefined is. Null. Uh, so you see how this starts getting annoying. We've got to put null, one null, two, three, four nulls, and then vertical. One, two, you can copy and paste these, but still it's annoying. And four nulls. And then finally, true for the vertical. Shall we save that and refresh here? Now we have a vertical slider that uh, 
strangely starts at three up top. Oh, right, that makes sense. So three's up at the top, zero's at the bottom. So we can also specify, once we make the slider, we can specify what number to start with. And we might want to start at zero down at the bottom and slide up. But it looks like this is geared towards volume. Uh, most likely, if you're using an up and down slider, that, that's probably volume. Like, turn the volume up. And when you, when you start with a default volume slider, do you really want to start with zero? So what we've done is just started with the maximum when it's a vertical slider. And uh, most likely, that's how you want to rock and roll. Okay, <laughs> with a volume of three. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so... Isn't that a bit of a pain though? And you can imagine if you wanted to get to something that was farther, like these ticks. Oh, well, the ticks is the next one. Uh, I want to use the ticks too, true. As a matter of fact, maybe we can adjust it so it's not a vertical slider anymore, that it's back to the ver or the horizontal, and we can just get to the use ticks. There's the ticks. And let's put in null for the vertical and see what that looks like with the ticks on horizontal. So there we go. And you see how it's jumping to those ticks as well? If you remove the, uh, which one, this one, or set that back to zero, by, de by default it is zero, so you could put in a null there, then the used ticks won't do anything because there'd be too many ticks. They just go away. There'd be too many ticks in there. What we could probably do, though, in the future, you still might want to know roughly where or, or what we're going up to and, and, and yet still be um, analog in there. Perhaps we could add another parameter at some point in Zim. We'll put it in the request, add another parameter sometimes in Zim, somewhere in Zim, where we say uh, it can be zero steps, but I still want to use ticks and the tick amount is one etc. So almost like a fake step. Anyway, back to it here. Oh, the point is, how can we get to that more easily? How can we just start using, well, start using ticks? If we put point 0.1, do we see a lot of ticks? Refresh. There we go. Looks nice, huh? So how can we get to see those ticks without having to put in all these nulls or indeed all these undefines? Let's introduce this thing called, and this is the point of this lesson, uh, called an object literal. And that looks like this. And inside this object literal, object literal, we can store these things called properties. Now, we have already seen that sliders have properties. Uh, for instance, slider.current, oh, we're using one here. Here it is. We can also set one, current value is equal to 2. So there we are setting the current value of the slider to 2, and we refresh here. Uh, we went 0.5, so this is 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. So there it is starting at 2, 2.5, and 3. That's a property stored on this, this object, the slider. The new slider is an object made from a class. We can also make what's called a literal version of them. And these literals, <laughs> here are some fun, some fun facts. This is, you may recognize the word literal. This is literally a string. So this is called a string. Well, the class is uppercase. String literal, like so. Any guesses as to a number literal? There we go. A number literal like that and uh, you'll see th there's other ones coming up i think we just briefly saw a, a boolean literal uh, true that's a boolean for logic literal there's also this thing called an array here is an array literal like that an array holds a list so it's a list of things not sure. I don't think we've seen the array yet. And then this is an object literal. Now, all of these things can be made with new. So you could say instead new string and pass in the word string. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about we put it on the end here? Or. So that's a string literal. Or. 
you can make a new string. And then similarly, you can say, or you can make a new number and then put the number in there. Now, why would anybody do that? I mean, why say new number seven when you can just say seven? And uh, the same with the others. Okay, so this is like an empty object with no properties in it, whereas the slider is a class that has a whole bunch of methods and, uh, well, may, may have, it's got a whole bunch of things. It makes the slider. And so it's, it's not really an empty object. It's already got stuff in it. But this right here is like the empty object version. <laughs> it's got nothing in it. It's an empty object. And so now we want to put things in it. We can say something like uh, const uh, obj for object is equal to, and we can put some properties into it like this. A is 10. Well, let's have something better. Hair is uh, blue. Yes, of course. Comma, eyes, colon, 2. Okay, so this is the format. You put the name of the property, and note that this name doesn't have quotes. Actually, can, but you don't need it. So this is the name of the property, and here's the value of the property. Blue and 2. Isn't that handy? So you can have a little label, and then it's value label and its value. Uh, now this object has those properties. Do you remember how to access properties? If we wanted to zog uh, the hair color, how would you do that? We just used a property here, so we put the object first. The object is the slider, and then there's its property. And that gave us the uh, current value of the slider. So if this is our object, why don't we call it a person? So if we have const person, and these are its properties, how would we then zog the hair color? Well, we put the name of the object first, person, the identifier, person, dot, hair. We use the dot syntax to access the property of the object, person dot hair. Nice, huh? So we save that up and let's view it here refresh mm, uh -oh. now it looks like I can't uh, sit with the square brackets out there I got away with the other ones <laughs> not sure why I can't just sit with some square brackets come on let me sit with some square brackets okay so there we go blue coming from line 56 blue line 56 zogging the person's hair color <clears throat> Now, can you imagine how using this object right here, the object literal, could be handy when passing in these parameters or passing in the arguments to the parameters? The parameters in behind all have names. Min, max, step, button. Maybe we should move these down. So I'm using Adam. I just selected them and now I moved them down to where? Here. I guess that's good. Yeah. So all of these uh, parameters are listed here in the docs. They've all got names, and here we've got values. So if we could just pass in one of these things, we could specify any of the parameters that we want, and the order doesn't even matter. The, we could switch the order of these two things, and it wouldn't matter. So then we don't have to worry about what order they're in, and we don't have to fill in a bar length when we don't need a bar length. We would only put the parameters that we want and their value. So back in Zim2, uh, Zim Duo, Duo, uh, we call it the Zim Duo technique, where we can pass in parameters this way, or we can pass in parameters as a single uh, object. When we do that, we call it a configuration object. So let's comment this line out. Comment. And we'll copy it as well. <laughs> One comment. <laughs> Should have copied it first. And we'll get rid of all this stuff. Well, or we can convert it. Uh, yeah, we, we'll look at what we had up above and we'll just get rid of all that stuff for now. And are you ready? Here we go. So 
we have this slider, it was a new slider, and we put in our configuration object. So I'll put a little comment here, passing in a configuration object. It's kind of a name that we as coders have made up. I don't think it's an official language name, but it's termed a configuration object because we're configuring this slider. Get it? Configuration object. Now, just be warned that uh, I mean, almost all, uh, almost all other libraries or other places where you have code, this has to be set up for you. Almost all the others can do one or the other. They either allow you to do it this way, or they allow you to do it <coughs> as uh, nor or sorry, they it's one or the other. You can do it this way, and that's fine for that that framework. Or you can do it this way, and, and that's how that framework does it. It's not both. So as far as I know, Zim is the only place where we actually do both. We created the code that does that, and we also provide that code to other people if, if they want to do it. So anyway, here we are passing in our configuration object. Now, what would we want to put then? We want to get to zero. Well, actually, zero is the default, so that's nice. We don't even have to put it. When we did this one, like so, we were going back and forth between 1 and 0 there, but if indeed that is 0, that's a default. And so we could have, if we wanted to, just put null for 0. But anyway, if uh, 0 is the default, we don't even need to specify a min. We could, if we wanted to, min 0, uh, but we don't have to. We can just say, I know it starts at 0, so let's start off with a max of 3. So here we go. Max of 3. And then what was 0.5? It was the step, colon, 0.5. Now, one of the things about doing it this way is you have to remember what the parameter is called. Was it steps or was it step? <laughs> that type of thing. Usually remembering what the parameter is called, these, these names, is a little bit easier than remembering the order in which the, well, it's a lot easier than remembering the order of the parameters. So it helps out a little bit. A max of 3, a step of 0.5, and what do we want to get to? Use ticks colon true. There we go. So now we have just accomplished the same thing as what was being done up here. And you can see that it's a little shorter. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's not. So one nice thing about the Zim Duo technique is it's up to you. You can, you can um, use it or you don't have to use it. Nice, huh? So here we are using it. The other nice thing about the Zim Duo technique is if you're looking at this, uh, I don't know, I don't know what this means. I mean, I can guess at that perhaps, but I have no idea at all what, what that is. Whereas the Zim, uh, using the configuration object, they're spelled out for you. And when you come back to read your code, you kind of know what's going on there. You can also, if, if these get to be too many, then you can drop them down onto multiple lines like that. And then you see this list of things. Boop. So we have a slider that has a max of 3, step of 0.5, and a use ticks true. We're centering it. When it changes, we call this function. We're starting off with the slider with the current value of that. All right, let's see if it works. Uh, not that one, uh, this one. And we refresh here. Sure enough, it appears to still be working. We don't know for sure any time that you make a change and, and yet the change isn't doing anything. If you really want to test that, you have to change it so it looks different. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, there. That looks different. And now we can see that that's really changing. All right. You know what? I think that's a good place to stop this first video. We didn't get our picture in. Uh, but we can get our picture in in the next video. And now we're approaching the half hour. We want to try and keep all of these things a half hour. And also we, we did something really, really important. We looked at this thing called uh, an object literal. Indeed, all knowing about literals in JavaScript. This is uh, vanilla JavaScript. Knowing about literals is important. Many people don't know 
about this stuff. They, they don't even really know that that's an object yet. It certainly is. You could have made it with a new string, that kind of thing. So there you are. You're learning JavaScript. And we'll apply this to some creative coding, hopefully soon. I know these are our steps, but we got to, you know, start a little bit small. Hopefully when we see this picture grow bigger and smaller, you know, that will be exciting for you. So I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a learn JavaScript with creative coding. <laughs> and as mentioned, this is lesson two, so we're going to give you a new ending. And then this new ending, uh, it's, it's me dancing again in some code that I made from what we're what we're seeing now. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at that. Well, there you go. There's 20 seconds that you can now no longer unsee. <laughs> so the code in the background there are a bunch of a bunch of lines and circles and things like that that we put on stage, and we're going to see how we can make some of that stuff. We'll we'll see you next time for uh, learn JavaScript with creative coding. Ciao.